Welcome back to the sawmill, friends. It looks like it's gonna be another hot one today. Got a lot going on. The first thing we need to do is go get the 754 and switch the attachment on the front end loader. You guys hang in there. Looks like we got some help today. Got the hatefulest cat on YouTube. Good morning, mama cat. How we doing today? ahead while we're at it and put a little grease in this zerd on the top. I may be flipping this thing up on its side today to do some cutting, I'm not sure. Well my goodness, wouldn't you know? It's out of grease. I'll tell you what guys, I know better than that. I can't believe I let this thing run out of grease the last time I used it and I didn't replace it. Don't do as I do, guys, I'll tell you what. Let's go grab some grease. This does give me a chance to use some new grease I've been wanting to try out. This is made by Schaefer's. I heard this on the podcast the other day with a bunch of farmers and the mechanics were saying it's the best thing to put on tractors. Waterproof Extreme Pressure Grease by Chafers, or Schaefer's rather, 221. They were proud of it though, it was $15. Drop the loader down so we can reach the other ones. We'll be ready to go mow. All right, friends, I think we're good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the tractor on and do a test run of the lane shark to make sure everything's working properly. And what we're gonna be doing right now is going down here to the right way that comes into my farm. And there's several little saplings and some undergrowth and some just weeds that are kind of encroaching on the right way on my neighbor's pasture field. So we're gonna go down there to keep him from having to weed eat that and do it the easy way and use the lane shark. There's several uh, little saplings down there that are dead that might be a challenge for this thing. They're pretty good size. We'll see how it does. At least I'm in the air conditioner today. That helps. I tell you what, friends, this thing ain't gonna work unless I hook up these lines. My goodness. There we go.
All right, guys, a few quick announcements and we'll get started. Number one is, I had to bring my phone so I'll remember these dates. I'll be at the Paul Bunyan Show this year with Woodmiser on October the 6th and the 7th. The Paul Bunyan Show is also on October the 8th. That's a Sunday. I will not be there on that Sunday. The hours are Friday from 8 to 5 and Saturday 9 to 3 in Cambridge, Ohio. If you're wondering where that's at, you can Google the Paul Dunyan, uh, Bun Dunyan, my goodness. Come on, Nathan. Been out in the heat today, you can tell. You can Google the Paul Bunyan Show and get the address and all the event information and stuff like that. It's really cheap to get in. I think it's like 10 bucks or something. And the parking is free from what I remember. I think it is free. But uh, anyways, I'll be at the Woodmiser tent on Friday and Saturday. If you don't catch me Friday or Saturday, just hang out or go look at something else. Maybe I want to grab lunch or something and I'll be right back. I'm not going to be in no set space. I'll just be kind of wandering around the Woodmiser tent talking to people and watching the sawmills run. On the sawmill, friends, we have a very, very, very nasty cherry log. And the reason I say it's nasty is because it's just got a lot of issues, guys. It's got a big swell right here at the butt of the tree. It comes up, it comes down like a slide. And then down here at the very end, it tapers just a little, but not a whole lot. I'm not going to use my toe boards because the taper is not that bad. And let me show you my strategy on how we're going to deal with this rascal. So this is a customer log. We're going to grade saw it the best we can at four quarter on the thickness. But down here, the diameter is showing you know, 30 inches. If it was like that and it was a gun barrel, this would be a very nice log, but that's not the case. It has a swell over here on my side. You guys can't see it. And right here, it kind of comes down like a slide. And then after that, the log is pretty consistent on the diameter after about two feet right here. So we will see a lot of heavy slab cuts. And because of that, I'm not going to drag them back. I don't want to handle them. They're going to be pretty heavy. So I'll try to flip them on the loading arms lower that down to the log deck and then bring in the track loader with the pallet forts and pick them up from there so I don't have to handle them. There'll be some real heavy cuts right here, especially on this bottom side. And if you're wondering why I'm not gonna slab this cherry at nine quarter like I do walnut, cherry has a bad tendency to crack, especially when you start getting eight and nine quarter on the thickness. Six quarter may be okay, but when you start getting a lot thicker than that on this cherry, it will crack on you. I think some guys that have a lot of success with cherry that I've talked to, uh, they're slabbing it at 12 quarter. That way all the cracking that happens during kiln drying, there's enough meat on the bone to plane down to get a nice eight quarter slab. So that's an option maybe, but I've never done it. So don't take my word for it.
All right, friends, we got it squared up decently. Got the slabs hauled down to the burn pile. And I think what I'm going to do is saw off of this face right here first. You guys can see it looks pretty clear down through there. The chain turner tore it up just a little right there, but that's only about a quarter of an inch down. Once we make our first cut, you won't never see that again. The pith is really off centered right here. It's eight inches down and nine inches over. On the other end, it's totally opposite of that. It's further down in this quadrant right here. So I think we'll be pretty safe if we saw off of this face right here. But before we do that, I need to clear off the table and move these other boards out of the way that we saw milled yesterday. 